We've just finished discussing route collectors. So let's have a look at our route server. It has got all the features of a route collector, but also announces routes to participating exchange point members according to the routing policy definitions. And it's implemented using the same specification as for a route collector. So the typical features of a route server are these. It helps scale route distribution for exchange points. Forwarding of packets is unaffected. Traffic does not go through a route server because it makes use of a BGP functionality known as third-party next hop, which we covered in the BGP attribute introduction. It simplifies the routing processes on ISP routers. Participation is optional. It's provided by the exchange point as a service to members. It is never mandatory. If a traditional router is used, and that's getting rarer and rarer these days, it will result in insertion of the route server autonomous system number in the AS path. So we generally want to avoid this. The route server is there to scale route distribution, not look like an alternative path through the exchange point. Route servers optionally could use policy which is registered in the Internet Routing Registry to facilitate the peering configuration between exchange point members. The diagram shows the typical n-squared peering mesh. Every member we add at the exchange point means that member will have to set up peering with every other member, if appropriate. And for large exchange points, maintaining this large peering mesh becomes cumbersome and is often too hard. A better solution, as the diagram shows, is to implement the route servers. There are two in the diagram, and the ISP routers will peer with the two route servers there. This means they only need two eBGP sessions rather than eBGP with every other member at the exchange point. The route server routing information flow is shown in this diagram. And the route server is there to scale BGP. The traffic flow follows the solid arrows. The routing information flow follows the dotted arrows. A common misconception is somehow that the route server is going to carry all the exchange point traffic as well. It doesn't. All it carries is the routing information shared between the various exchange point members. Traffic remains running directly between the connected routers over the exchange point Ethernet LAN. It does not go anywhere near the route server. So the advantages of a route server are that they help scaling the larger exchange points by scaling the eBGP mesh and scaling prefix distribution. It separates the routing and the forwarding, and it simplifies the BGP configuration management on ISP routers, meaning the ISPs don't need to maintain a large number of eBGP peers as they only need to peer with the route server. Of course, there are a few disadvantages which should be considered as well. ISPs could lose direct policy control. If route servers the only peer, the ISPs have no control over who their prefixes are distributed to. And this is fine if the ISP has an open peering policy. With selective or restricted peering policy, it's not clear if a route server would be useful for the ISP member. The ISP becomes completely dependent on a third party. The configuration, troubleshooting, and reliability of the route server. If there's a problem with the route server, the ISP will lose the peering and connectivity with the peers it has learned through the route server. And there's a possible insertion of the route server's AS number into the routing path. And this happens if using a router rather than a dedicated route server BGP implementation. And so if this happens, traffic engineering and multi-homing needs more care. So route servers are provided as an optional service these days at exchange points. And indeed, most exchange points now offer a route server as a service to members, even new exchange points with just a few members. ISPs peer directly with significant peers, and with the route server for the rest. 
ISPs with an open peering policy usually prefer to peer with a right server. The implementations we see today are shown on the slide. The most common and the standard which works best is BERT at the URL shown on the screen. GoBGP is also being used by some exchanges now. And Quagga, a long-term favorite, is also used at some exchange points. But note, this is Quagga that has been developed and improved by Lynx to help with scaling of that exchange point in the UK. There's also a new fork of Quagga where the software is being worked on to improve it to help it scale better than the original implementation. Routers can be used, and any router will work just fine, but with the caveat of the route server autonomous system appearing in the AOS path. Indeed, Cisco IOS 15.2 onwards and IOS XE 3.7 onwards has a route server client configuration available. But very few exchange points actually use a physical router for this function, given BERD is pretty much the world standard for the route server implementation. So some things to think about for new exchange points. Would a route server benefit your exchange point? It's certainly helpful when BGP knowledge is limited, but of course it's not an excuse not to learn BGP. And it does help having to avoid maintaining a large number of eBGP peers.